In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to configure a package that conditionally processes files based on a date. So I'll be using a for each loop, and inside that for each loop, I'm going to use a script task to check the last modified date for each file in a source directory. And if it's been modified since that date, then I will process it. If it has not been modified since that date, then I'll skip processing for it. And the processing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy over an Excel file from a source directory to a destination directory. So I'm going to show you the variables that I set up first, because there's quite a few of them. So here's our min date stamp, and you can see it has a date and a time in here. So any files in the source directory that were modified since that date, which is today when I'm making this recording, um, but anything after 8.33 this morning will be processed. And if it was last modified before that, then it will not be processed. And then the next variable I want to show you is the file name variable. And so each time through the for each loop, we're going to be processing a different file from the source directory. And so this will contain the name of the file currently being looked at or handled. And then we have the source directory variable, which just points at the, has the fol folder path where all the files are located that we're going to loop through. And then the source full name variable uses an expression to combine the source directory with the name of the file that's currently being processed. And then we have the same thing for the destination. We have uh, this variable that points at the destination directory. And then we have the dest full name variable that, again, uses an expression to combine the uh, directory or the file path with the name of the file currently being processed. And then finally we have this boolean variable that is initialized to false and we're going to use a script task that just checks the date of the file against the date in our min date stamp variable and sets that to true or false based on that evaluation. So I'll move this out of the way now. And I've already configured the connection managers for the Excel source and destination. And so we'll start by dragging the for each loop container onto the canvas. Actually, I want to show you the source and destination directories also. Here we have the list of files that are in the directory that we're going to point the for each loop container at. And based on the date modified here, uh, there's four files that have been modified since 8.33 this morning, and there's two that have not. So those last two, Laporte and Fountain, will not be, the data in them will not be copied over into um, matching files in the destination directory. And now we'll go back to our Visual Studio. So we'll change the name on the 4-H loop container to uh, determine if file should be processed. We'll double click on the 4-H loop container to open up the editor. And we'll go to collection and We'll change the enumerator to for each file enumerator. And then we need to point it at the folder that contains the source files. And that folder is called Excel source files. And then the files that we're going to be looking at is anything that ends with .xls. And we want to want it to pull the name and extension so that we can 
uh, combine it with the source or the destination file path. And then in variable mappings, the file name is going to be read into the file name variable. And the index is uh, zero, and that's correct. Now we're going to drag the script task into the 4-H loop container. And so this will be looking at one file at a time each time through the loop. All right, now we double click to open up the script editor and we're going to be using C sharp script. Here's our read only variables. So it needs to be able to look at the actual file, the modified time of the file. So we need to point it at the source full name. It needs to be able to use that um, variable as well as as well as the date and time min date stamp. All right, so it can just read those variables. And then it needs to be able to write into this Boolean variable to tell us true or false, whether it meets our criteria or not. And then we click on Edit Script here. And I'm going to select the whole script and delete it and paste in the script that I had pre-written. And I know it works. So I'll just save this. and. Close that window. Now we're back to the script task editor. And I'll click OK to close that. And now um, I'm going to drag the data flow task into the 4-H loop container. And this will be used to process the file, so meaning the file that we're currently working with. And we'll connect the arrow from the script task. And now we need to set up this arrow. This is actually a constraint. So I'm going to double click on the arrow itself. And the evaluation operation is not just a constraint, but it's an, an expression and a constraint. And of course, the value we want is success. And then the expression will just be based on that Boolean variable called process file. So we drag that into the expression section and we evaluate the expression and it's false because that's what we initialized it to. Click OK and down here you see logical and all constraints must evaluate to true and that's what we want so we're done configuring that. Any file that does not match that criteria will not go on to the data flow task and it'll just start the for each loop container on another iteration. Now we'll configure the data flow. So we're on the data flow canvas now and I'm just going to go down and get the Excel source. And I need it to use the correct connection manager for the source. And then it's pointing at the uh, Montgomery.xls file. And the name of the sheet is records. And that's true of the sheets in all of the files. And we click on columns to make sure that it got the correct metadata, which looks good. And now we'll use the Excel destination component. We'll connect the arrow on the source. Double click to open the editor and uh, it's chosen the correct connection manager. And again the sheet name will be the same, records. And we click on mappings to get the columns all mapped properly. And then we'll click OK. And we're done configuring that. Now I need to set up the connection managers to use an expression for the property called Excel file path. So here you can see the Excel file path and it's set to point just at the Montgomery.xls file. 
and we need it to change each time through the loop. So I go here to the expressions and uh, I had already set this up previously. Um, but anyway, so we selected the Excel file path property and then we set up the expression to just be the uh, destination full name because we're in the destination connection manager now. And we evaluate the expression and there you can see it's currently pointing at Montgomery in the destination folder. Um, but that will change as we go through the for each loop. So we click OK and finish this up. Now we'll go double check the source. I right mouse click on it and click on properties. And here again we already have it configured. The Excel file path property uses the uh, source full name, which is pretty much the same as destination except it points to a different folder. So those will now get updated each time through the for each loop container. And I think we're ready to execute it. So I'm going to right mouse click on this package and click on execute package. And it was successful. One more thing I wanted to do is set up set up breakpoints. So I'm going to go, I right mouse clicked on the script task and I go to edit breakpoints and I'm going to select this one which is break when the container receives the on post execute event. And I'll click OK there. And I want to show you the current time is 11.49 and the destination files were last updated or copied over I should say at 1148 because I just ran the package and you'll see that'll get updated when I run it again so I right mouse click here and I click on execute package and now you'll be able to see down here in the watch list the file name starts out with fountain and the process file boolean variable says false so that one's not going to be copied over so I click continue to let it work on the next file and again Laporte is false and that is correct and then we go to Montgomery which is true because it has been updated since 8.33 this morning and we'll advance again. Park will be updated. Advance again. Rush will be updated. Continue and Vigo will be updated. And then we click continue one more time and the package completes successfully. So the time now is 11.50. We'll go look at what actually got copied over in our destination. And you can see there were the four files that did get copied over and they have a time of 11.50. So, thank you for watching. Are you tired of updating packages because of changing metadata? How many hours have you spent accommodating new source and destination columns? How many nearly identical packages do you have to maintain? Especially when you need to update hundreds of them. Well, you should check out Cozy Rock's Dataflow Task Plus component. Dataflow Task Plus provides the ability to acquire the metadata and map the columns at runtime. You can even use transformations on the data. Just add the changes at the source and destination, execute, and Dataflow Task Plus will handle the process of extracting, transforming, and loading the desired columns from the source to the destination without a need to change the existing package. It works with any standard SSIS Dataflow components, transformations, and application adapters. No more manual package updates. Design your SSIS data flows with Dataflow Task Plus and save hundreds of hours. A vision of completely metadata-driven processing is now possible. Download CozyRock's Dataflow Task Plus from CozyRock.com. It's free for testing and development within Visual Studio.
If you'd like to follow us on social media, here's how you can do that.